Okay, so what you're seeing right here, this is my um, kind of like my testing tank. This is this is I do a lot of reverse plating in both silver and gold. And this was actually for a long time. It was my my primary means of of reverse plating these metals. Um, it, it's it's far too small today, but it still makes a great test tank. And, uh, you, you know, as you may know, I've been out of refining for like 10 years at this point. I'm just now getting back in. And I knew when I came back in that when, when I went back after silver and gold plate, I had some some definitive changes I was going to make. Look at that. You can see the silver stripping off of it in real time right in front of you. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Um, so I had some changes I wanted to make. Um, I now have, in, in, instead of a one-part solution, I now have a two-part solution. Um, I changed up the composition of my anodes and my cathodes. You know, also that I can make this a little more efficient. Um, I, I had, over the years, I've had three different refiners tell me that if, if you could efficiently and economically recover silver from silver plate that you would make a fortune three three different refiners told me that and back then silver was between eight and twelve dollars an ounce not 35 and 45 dollars an ounce they said you'd make a fortune between eight and twelve dollars an ounce now i didn't know it was going to be this high at this time period um of course, there's a lot of speculation. Silver would get up this high eventually, um, and, and and it's here. It's doing it. It's it's pushing towards that fifty dollars an ounce. But you know, I mean, I took what those guys said to heart, and I really sat down to figure it out. And um, all I had was was the traditional methods uh, that were that, that you know, kind of what other guys were showing me online. And I'm like. I get it. This this is not working. This is not efficient. This is not worth doing. This is a problem. And so I sat down and I made a list of all the problems and how do I solve these problems? And so in my time off, uh, when I was plotting my comeback, this is where we're at. And I'm, I'm using this small tank here just, just to test this out. Um, you'll see as we go through this, there's, there's, um, a few changes and tweaks I need to make uh, to get it just a little bit better. And hey, I'm going to apologize right now in advance. I, I I'm, I'm a pretty decent refiner, even even after a 10 year vacay. But I suck at making videos for social media. There's some parts in this that are probably going to be bad. You know, here's here's the thing: you can't you can't rewind refining. That's what I learned. You you can't you can't rewind the refining and go. Oh, I need to do that again. It's, oh, crap. I, I just messed that up recording it, and I can't go back and do it again. So there's there's a couple of those speed bumps in here. So so look at that. Now, you can see how that was white. See, see the white on that spoon? And then there's the silver underneath. Okay, that white is the actual silver. And the silver that you're seeing, that's the copper. Or, I'm sorry, the nickel. That's the nickel. And... um. You know, just just so you know, metals when they're dissolved, they're different colors. Okay, like silver, it's going to be kind of de depending on its its um, density in the solution, it, it's going to be clear to a light yellow, which you you can see some yellow in there, right? But you're starting to see some green. Nickel, when it's dissolved, is green. Nickel is green when it's dissolved, and we're starting to get just a little bit of nickel in solution. Copper, when it's dissolved in solution, turns blue. So by the time we're done, we'll have a little bit of a bluish-green solution here. So, um, so far, so good. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Starting to see um, some flakes popping off my cathode. Um, you know, I've got enough electroplating experience to know there is absolutely no condition that exists in this tank that is going to allow for the successful electroplating or electrodeposition of silver on that cathode. It's not going to happen. 
it's not going to happen and you're going to watch and see what does happen here in just a few because it actually gets it gets a little nasty it gets gets a little gnarly and if, if you're a refiner looking at this you're like dude that's bad and i'm going nope i'm happy with this that's that's good that's good all right so yep there we are on the first tank let's um let's swap that guy out and let's see what happens Okay, so right here we can see the. Uh, whew, I got a little warm. Uh, we can see the tank uh, as as it's progressing. Um, what you see on the right there, that's that's just rinse water. Um, yep, we'll get that out. We'll load the load that little tray back up. I cannot believe I used to use this as my primary tank. Now it's just just for testing kind of keep it around because it's like man i can't get rid of it i'm too emotionally attached to that that little tank <laughs> so there we go get some new silverware in there um i mean this this is what it was designed to do i mean i'm i'm, I'm getting uh the reaction that i want to see it's it's uh it, it's stripping the silver and then it, it, it's de i don't want to say it's depositing it onto the cathode because that's that's not really um accurate but at the same time it it is it's, it's just there, there's there's no conditions in the tank that allow for that deposition to to really hold on it, it just it can't hold on to the cathode um like it needs to but this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get get the silver off the substrate and out of solution as quickly and cheaply as possible. Man, I'm seeing that. I did it. I'm happy. All right. So here we're. I've, I've finished uh, with all of this, all of the silver. Where there it is, you can see it. Um, that's what it looks like when it's been stripped. Uh, so in the triangular flask, that's the rinse water. And then in the little graduate, that's that's the metallic silver that we captured. And in the back is the cell. So um, there you can see the silver in there. That's the silver powder that was was floating on top of the solution. Um, get that rinse down into the into that funnel. That was easy easy enough silver to cover. And so right there, remember when I told you that, um, yeah, I was really bad at making videos. Yeah, right. That's it right there. <laughs> you, you were supposed to get to see that. You, you, did you see all the, the, the silver down on the bottom, man? I, I diluted the whole thing and, and precipitated the silver chloride. And, uh, you know, what happened was I had my phone set to photo and not video. So when I pushed the button, it took a picture instead of hit record. And like an idiot, man, I'm just going. Didn't even realize it happened to happen to be able to look at the camera and go, hey, what? Hey, <laughs> what happened? So, yeah, that's all right, though. There, there's more silver. I'll, I'll get it in for you next time because it, it is a cool process. It's fun to watch. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm doing is just decanting. Um, so y you didn't really get to see it. The, the, uh, the cell since, since the five pounds was done, I went ahead and finished the tank off. Normally I wouldn't do that. Uh, I would, I would recover the silver and then keep the tank going. Um, but since I don't have that much scrap on hand and I'm doing really small lots here, testing out my theories uh, before I, you know, go full scale with it, I'll, I'll just stop the tank and, and uh, do that. So get all that little powder out of that great big jar. My bigger sprayers put that on the list. So there's, there's that silver powder. That's a silver salt. It's called silver chloride. And um, we're going to reduce that back down to metallic silver. Filter it off first. 
something else I got to put on my list is a vacuum pump because the way I'm filtering this with with gravity um, doesn't get it very. I mean, it just doesn't get it very clean. You'll see when it's done. The silver, the silver actually isn't very pure. Um, the process that we're doing right here, this this has absolutely nothing to do with refining whatsoever. This is what's called recovery. See, before you can refine it, you got to recover it. And then between recovery and refining, you have all kinds of cleaning that you have to do. So what we're doing right here, this this is just, just separation, recovery. We haven't started refining yet, so this silver is actually really impure. And the fact that I don't have vacuum filtration, that, that doesn't help. You know, a vacuum would pull all that dirty liquid through so fast uh, and completely, and then you can just pour, pour some clean water on and, and very effective, but gravity's not, not great. That is the early morning sun coming in there. Markets haven't even opened yet. I'm doing this refining before before the markets open. Before I sit down to trade. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to rinse all of that into um, that larger jar, add some water to it. What I got to do now is, um, oh, it looks like I'm filtering it one more time. Try and clean it up a little bit more. See, see the difference between the two solutions? The one behind it is very, very blue, and that one there is only a light blue. Um, but still with vacuum, it'd be, be a lot better. Um, do a great job with gravity. So we'll, we'll put it all in there. And now we're going to add in lye, lye, and uh, raise the pH, and we're going to convert that that silver salt, that sodium chloride. We're going to reduce that back down to uh, metallic silver, and and you'll know when it happens. Watch, because you can see how it's starting to change color. Here in a couple minutes, it's it's going to change from from silver to black. Right there, see it? It just happens. So we use that mixer. That little hand mixer. Now that was uh, corn syrup I just added in. It needs glucose. Now remember how clear it was before I dissolved it? Now look at it. It's it's that nasty greenish color. So that was not pure silver salt that came down. There was there was impurities with it because see. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, about, about you got the copper, you got the nickel, but there was also some pewter in there. There were two pieces in there that were pewter, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure what was in it, um, but obviously the sodium hydroxide dissolved it. While not only, so not only did it, did it, um, did the sodium hydroxide reduce the silver chloride, the silver salt back into metallic silver but it it dissolved whatever that is it, it i don't know it's got a yellowish brownish color to it so i'm i'm thinking it's it's probably some kind of iron some form of iron that was that was mixed in with that pewter that see that Nasty. It was. It, it, it wasn't that color when it went in. So that lie definitely dissolved something. But I, I, I knew it was dirty. Like I said, we're just, we're just recovering. Yeah, I'm squeezing it all out because I don't have vacuum filtration. Get it all in there and. Squeeze it out again. Let that little bit settle in the bottom and 
capture capture that later. So there's there's the finished silver. Um, all told, it weighed 2.7 grams. But you know, I mean, I, I I can tell you from the just from the volume I've done in the past that that is that is not pure silver. That is that is probably in at, at this point in recovery, it's in the 60 to 80 percentile impurity. It's not even sterling quality. So. You know, it's got a long way to go, but uh, that's where it's at. And I think we'll uh, stop it here. And uh, I've got another five pounds to do and make a better video. Thanks for watching, guys.